Trapped in traffic or held up in line, how to keep you and your family safe if a tornado strikes. But that snow only added up to between two and a half or three inches of, of rainfall. You can't catch up that quickly. Snow piled in Missouri, was that enough to end the drought? And gearing up for severe weather necessities to stock up on. KUMU 8's first alert, Eyes on the Sky show, starts now. Welcome to a special edition of KOMU 8 News. First alert weather, eyes on the sky. Good evening, I'm Dave Schmidt. And I'm Rosie Newberry. KOMU has the largest staff of weather personnel in mid-Missouri. Couple that with our strong commitment to provide weather, weather coverage you can count on. We staff our weather center around the clock, updating our forecast and tracking weather conditions continuously. We'll begin the show by diving into the drought with a recap of the past year and why the state is now in the clear. Eric? Okay, Rosie, thanks a lot. You know, we were faced with a very challenging 2012 when a very dry spring emerged, and really that stuck along and uh, provided a very historic drought by the end of the summer. In fact, more than two-thirds of the country suffered from the drought, a phenomenon the nation had not experienced in almost 60 years. 2012 was the third warmest and third driest May through August time period for Missouri. In fact, since the dirty 30s. Now for everyone that wanted to pack Punxsutawney Phil into a snowman for his early spring predictions, you may want to ease up just a little bit. This late springtime snow may be just the thing for drought-stricken area needs to replenish some of the moisture in the ground. But how does that soil look right now for people prepping for the planting season? KOMU8's Maddie Heidenreich revisits last year's drought and its effects on the upcoming growing season. When you think of last year's drought, the plight of farmers come to mind. However, the drought impacted everyone, from farmers to landscapers, gardeners, and homeowners, all battling to get their plants enough moisture to stay alive. The rumble of thunder and the fall of rain was far too unfamiliar in summer 2012. Lawns, trees, shrubs, everything suffered. Both More moisture in the topsoil. Results show about three inches of liquid water in February, with an additional three inches from the rain and late snow in March. Let's hope Lupo's predictions are more accurate than Punxsutawney Phil. Topsoil moisture is helpful for immediate use, but it can easily evapu evaporate when there's not enough rainfall to replenish it. Now take a look at this map monitoring the drought index across the states. Before the recent snow, parts of central Missouri had abnormally dry conditions, but now the state is in the clear after the late snow we had in March. Up ahead, on the streets or in the grocery aisles, if a tornado strikes, do you know how to keep you and your family safe? And scanning the skies, tracking storms, a behind the scenes look at our live weather coverage. But first, here's a trivia question for you, true or false? Most lightning victims are actually male. The answer coming up right after the break. Welcome back, everyone. Before the break, we asked you, true or false, a majority of lightning victims are, in fact, male. The answer is overwhelmingly true. 80% of all lightning fatality victims are male and are relatively young, between the ages of 15 and 40. Most of these fatalities stem from people trying to reach shelter who just didn't make it in time. Eric, over to you. Okay, Rosie, thanks a lot. Working in the First Alert Weather Center is fun and enjoyable, but when the weather turns severe, here's how our advanced weather technology helps keep you and your family safe. Tracking storms through central Missouri is easy with the help of Doppler 8 First Alert Radar. Our live local radar was the first television weather radar in central Missouri over your television at home. Now, we are always constantly upgrading our equipment and learning about new weather technology to bring you the level of weather coverage you can count on. Look for this commitment to continue into the spring and summer months of 2013 as well. We want to take just a moment to focus in on one of our weather tools. It's radar, which actually stands for radio detection and ranging. They're all used to detect dangerous wind conditions as well. True or false, in the event of an approaching tornado, it is recommended that you open the windows of your home to equalize pressure and minimize damage. Welcome back. Before the break, we asked you this true or false question. Save yourself the time of opening windows. Christine, over to you. Well, here in mid-Missouri, we know all too well that severe weather can happen at any place and at any time. Now, the most ideal location to be at would be in the basement of a home, but what about if you're out running some errands throughout the afternoon hours? Here's a look at some tips to help keep you and your family safe, no matter what the location. 
A tornado siren is usually one of the first things to come to mind when people hear the words tornado warning. These devices, like the one behind me, was actually invented to warn those outside of impending danger. But how about when you're inside? Today we can access severe weather information on things like our smartphones, television, and even radio, especially a NOAA weather radio. Now is the perfect time as we approach severe weather season to discuss a plan for your family in the case of severe weather. When inside of a house or an apartment, the first thing you want to make sure you do is head to the lowest level of the structure. When there, you want to stay away from any doors or windows, so an interior room is best, such as a bathroom or a closet. When there, you may want to remember things such as your purse, a pair of shoes, even a bike helmet or a batting helmet can act as extra protection against you in the case of a tornado. While driving during severe weather, it's important to pull over to the side of the road, put on your hazards, and if you are in immediate danger, you're going to want to stay in your vehicle, keep your seatbelt on, and keep your head below the window. Now, you may want to use things such as your coat, a blanket, or your hands to protect yourself in the back of your head. So let's say it's a hot summer afternoon and the chance for thunderstorms is present across mid-Missouri, but you try to do some quick shopping before the storms come through. Now, if you're in an area like the Walmart or Lowe's behind me, the objects in these stores can actually act like potential debris in a case of a tornado. The most important thing that you want to remember if you're in this type of a situation is to get away from the high ceilings. Those cause the most potential dangerous situation in these type of, of structures. Again, as similar to a house or an apartment, you're going to want to make sure you get into an enclosed area such as a bathroom. Now a mobile home is actually one of the most dangerous places to be at during severe weather, whether that be high wind or tornado. Now is the time to make sure you have a plan in place for you and your family to help keep you safe this upcoming spring. And coming up next, stocking up for severe weather. I'll show you what to have on hand at your house. And true or false, Missouri falls in the 50th percentile for the amount of thunderstorm activity in the entire United States. The answer is up next. Well, before the break, we ask you, true or false? KOMU 8's Rosie Newberry now shows us a severe weather safety kit that you can keep in your home to stay safe during periods of severe weather. KOMU and the National Weather Service, of course, want to keep you safe and keep you updated. Here's a look at what we think would be a great severe weather safety keep in kit. Mind that these recommendations probably need to be adjusted for you accordingly, but otherwise, that's a look at what's going on in your severe safety kit. Throughout the show, we've quizzed you with some true or false weather questions. We wanted to test your knowledge of severe weather trivia on the fly, so we hit the streets of Columbia to find out. Can you tell me the difference between a severe weather watch and a warning? A watch is the potential for it to happen. It might happen. Okay. When there are conditions that might lead to a storm. A warning is where it's actually happening. When there's actually a storm in the area. It's coming your way. A weather watch actually means conditions are right for severe weather, while a weather warning means severe weather is occurring at that time. How hot do you think lightning is? Like in Fahrenheit. <laughs> Extremely hot. What are we measuring in? in Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit? Oh, gosh. I know it's at least uh, as hot as, as the surface of the sun. It's got to be as hot as, like, melting steel. 82. 4,000 degrees. A million. It's very hot. Lightning is actually 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. What severe weather event kills more people annually than any other? A tornado. Flash floods. Tornado. A flood or something yeah, that people right. don't take seriously, but is going to implement the most damage. Flooding kills more people annually than any other severe weather event. How many tornadoes do you think were observed in Missouri last year? Um, I want to say five. Twelve. Let's say five. Twenty. Seven. There were actually 29 tornadoes observed in Missouri last year. Last one, true or false, uh, tornadoes in severe weather can happen only in certain months. True. False. Partially true. False. I know that they have a season, so I'm going to say true. The answer is false. Severe weather can occur at any time, at any place. Be prepared. As we finish our look at all the ways we bring you for severe weather information to keep you also safe. Also find it uh, through the Apple uh, App Store. Any of those platforms are going to be good places for you to go ahead and download our weather app. Thousands of users and growing every single day.